guys welcome back to my channel it's angela and welcome back to hashtag deacon walk 2023 we are now in scorpio deacon 2 and let me tell you something okay so this is how i've been feeling right um so let me show you the wheel first because i did pull it out this time um i just printed this off um off google um let me find scorpio right here it's a fixed sign which means it's smack dab in the middle of fall it's not changing seasons it's literally in fall <clears throat> um and we have um wait no that's sagittarius or scorpio scorpio fixed sign scorpio october 23rd to november 2nd um, on here, which was the Five of Cups, which was the first beacon, and it was Mars in Scorpio. Now we have the Sun in um, Scorpio, which is representative of the Six of Cups. It's November 3rd to November 12th. Um, today is Saturday, uh, November 4th, 2023. I haven't done these because um, I was going to do it Thursday night and get ahead of the game. Um I went and did my second job and I was too tired. I'm like, you know what? It's not till tomorrow anyway. And then last night I was so tired by the time I got off work and did all the things I needed to do to be an adult and a mom and a, and a wife. And I was like, I'm done. I'll just do it in the morning. So here we are. Um, let me tell you something. So I watched yesterday afternoon Marlena Teresa's video that she did. And if I remember, I'll post her video below where she talked about the deacon um which is the six of cups and i just will put some cards out i totally forgot um this is the deck i've been using since i started this pretty much so we have the six of cups here um and then the sun and death death is representative of scorpio so death is not the card that's not changing throughout this whole thing the sun is a representative of the sun which is now what the Scorpio has moved into. So we're the sun and Scorpio. Um, and together, those kind of represent the six of cups. Now, I personally have issue with the six of cups. Uh, I want to tell you, the last three days, I'm like, what is going on? Because my emotions have been high, low, high, low, high, low. And I said in the first deacon that it felt, and it didn't hit me till like, yesterday or the day before um that we were are in a water sign and i told you guys because i don't show emotions very well um i was scared of being in the water signs the first one wasn't that bad now when i was in the fire signs i was not expecting um aries and whatever the other one is i forget um the amount of sheer amount of feeling like i'm being burned alive uh i was more scared of the water signs and the last water sign was not that bad and i'm like oh okay this isn't this isn't bad and then scorpio hit <laughs> i literally feel like the water had the the fire is over but it's been put out by water that has flooded the area and now the water's receding and we're finding just crap, burnt wood, um, devastation, um, childhood memories and photos and stuff being washed down the drain, ruined because of the water. And that is how I felt this entire time in Scorpio. It has not gotten any better with the sun moving into Scorpio either, because now I feel like the sun is receding the waters, drying everything up but the remnants of what you're left behind seeing is devastating and the six of cups has always been my issue of issue card because it's supposed to be about childhood memories and things like that and i didn't have great childhood memories uh matter of fact most of my childhood memories are horrible um because i did not have a great childhood um, and plus the very first deck I learned on, which is the Tarot Illuminati by Eric C. Dunn, uh, artwork or companion book by Kim Huggins. I was, feel like I was re-traumatized all over again with this card. 
now it looks like two little kids having a time. There's the cups there. And then there's this dude. And I immediately heard pedophile. <laughs> now, that's not probably what this was intended for. And I've never read the story that she did on this specific card. But this card gives me the creeps. It's this weird old dude watching two kids play and have fun and whatever and i'm like why is he what like he could be just a guard and i'm noticed in um not in this one but i think they're the traditional rws there is a dude standing off in the corner like a guard but i did not see it that way the first time i was learning tarot and that kind of stuck with me so this card is not a great card for me um at all and I just, I think it was interesting that Marlena Teresa could take this whole new beautiful take on it. And it was so stunning and amazing. And then the whole time I'm thinking, no, no. <laughs> um, but she was talking about the gifts of the cups because the gifts are, there's always a gift being given to you in the cups. That it could be the gift of memory, the gift of, um, the, the memory is the gift right that this wonderful childhood memory that you had but if you didn't have any great childhood memories that's that's not a gift it's kind of a uh, like a snake in a box you know what i mean <laughs> so uh this specific card brought up a lot of feelings for me and of course we're in a water sign that is filled with emotion and i was not expecting the the tsunami that hit me in the last few days and i've noticed the last couple days it's been the entire uh, first deacon and now the second deacon of Scorpio, then I'm just like, I don't know from one day to the next how I'm going to react to anything. I'm just like, everything is flooding and drowning and I'm just drowning along with it. So I just found that very interesting. But I was like, uh, I did say the, the six of cups gifts, as she says, feels like the end of the crow, the movie, the crow, which I just recently watched because I've watched movies for Halloween this year that typically people don't have forgotten about like the frighteners with michael j fox or the crow with um brandon lee um i love that movie and at the end uh it's uh it says it feels like the end of the crow where he gifts the killer with the pain his fiance felt before she died so he's like <clears throat> i don't you can have this gift i don't want it anymore and that is exactly how I feel on this deacon is you can take that memory, that pain that I felt and you can, you can keep it because I no longer want it. Um, and I just found that very interesting. Plus, um, I feel like the sun is illuminating that shadow, um, illuminating the, it's putting a spotlight on this particular shadow. That's mine. And I didn't realize this was still a shadow of mine till we hit this deacon. And I'm like, this makes sense and even the previous deacon deacon one of scorpio i'm just like i hate scorpio right now uh, because i literally feel like i'm drowning in memories that weren't that great and um yeah it was just very illuminating and, and i think because of that it is perfectly fitting for the sun in scorpio and then i want to show you guys real quick the other cards i have i always pull out where did they put them i just put them it's from my oh my gosh my journey of the sacred bee oh did i leave them in the box i think i left them in yeah so we have the sun and there's the sun symbol here we have the six of cups um i put i pulled the eight of cups oh my god I pulled the wrong card the death card and there's scorpio here and then let me hold on a second i'm gonna have to pause you and then we have the six of cups um here is scorpio in the sun or sun and scorpio and it is a beautiful beautiful card and the keyword is pleasure and i'm like is it though <laughs> i feel like it's a double-edged sword um in this i would much rather have this image than this one because this one just brings up, I don't know why, it, it's a trigger for me. Um, and I didn't realize it was still a trigger until we hit the sneak. And I'm like, this is why I'm not liking Scorpio. Because it's bringing out even Deacon 1 with the, um, oh my gosh. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, and this is, this tarot deck is based on the Thoth also. So, um, this one is much more pleasurable to me. Haha. <laughs> uh, plus I love daisies and there's a whole reason behind that. Then I wanted to show you guys my favorite sun card ever. This is from the Key Tarot. And I love the sunflowers in the background. I love this card. Um, but I just wanted to show you that as well. As we get into the book here. Um, I was floored, honestly, because, uh, she does talk about, let's go back to here. She does talk about how the sun and death feed into each other. They're never ending cycles because they, they give way to one another. And I just thought that was beautiful the way she wrote that. Um, let me go back here. So the Six of Cups brings together the Lord of the Fire of the World uh, and the Lord of the Gates of Death, the Sun and Death, both on horseback, which I never noticed before. Um, here in the starkest of contrast, the living, the life-giving, life-sustaining center of existence on the one side, uh, the archetypal force of ending on the other. In the contest of these two writers, we shall see that neither ever has the last word. Each yields to the other perpetually. And I love that idea that neither of them are winning because there, there's always life and there's always death. There's always, there's always a cyclical cycle, uh, between the two. Um, and I just, I found that fascinating. Um, and then, interestingly, the first day of Scorpio 2 is usually November 2nd, the Day of the Dead, or All Saints, All Souls Day, which I love. Um, in New Mexico, it is immortalized for Nortinos in Pixar's Coco. Marigolds are the uh, iconic symbol of the day, and I love, I have a couple of death cards with the marigolds on them, and I love it. Okay, so the lower the sun, the longer in the shadow. And I just thought, what? Because this is exactly how I'm feeling <laughs> this deacon. Says the, as every professional photographer and cinematographer knows, the most beautiful time of day, the lighting most flattering to our human selves is the golden hour, just after sunrise or just before sunset. The sun's light is warm and diffused. The shadows are longer, but also paler than they are at noon. And it's funny because I'm always taking pictures at sunset and sunrise. Usually it's just sunset because I'm not up that early. Where does the shadow come from? From standing in the sun, no sun, no shadow. Wherever we go, as long as we are living, we carry our shadow with us. It's the negative space cast by our presence in life. It's a prerequisite and a co corollary of our being here in full daylight. Our shadow invites us to contemplate the hole left behind when it, we are gone. And I just found that interesting. It completely talks about the shadow, which is what I see in this, this particular deacon. Um, in full daylight, our shadows invite us to contemplate. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. You don't simply vanish. You leave an imprint, a memory, a U shaped shadow in the hearts of those who love you to thrive in life, to cultivate the shadow, the brighter, the light, the stronger, the loss. Wow. Golden light floods the six of cups. It, Gilds the mem uh, it gilds the masonry and stretches across the courtyard. Nowhere else in the miners do we see this effect. And I'm not seeing it here, but I was going to pull out a regular card for that. I forgot. Except perhaps in the, uh, the other solar miner, the Three of Wands, where boats sail on a golden sunlit sea. This warming glow hints of the alchemy of the Six of Cups, the Philosopher's Stone, it was said, could transform any substance into gold. Something similar is happening here in the heart of the scorpion. The present is transforming into the past, taking on a value as it passes from awareness to memory. Famously, the Six of Cups signifies nostalgia. The light is flattering when we look back from our own sunset hours as if our hearts place a golden filter of affection over the past. In turn, everything we created in life, affection, resentment, love, longing, hatred, carves the hearts of those we knew, coloring their past, altering their future. 
That's the gift one person gives the other in the Six of Cups. The point isn't the flowers, but the memory of receiving them. On the left of the image, a figure on the left passes into remembrance, and someday it will all be the children's turn as well. I just thought that was beautiful. Say it with flowers. Between the sun, the sun, the Six of Cups, and the Death card, I count at least two dozen flowers. The language of flowers had packed, had peaked into in Victorian England a few decades before Smith drew her images, but I believe we could nevertheless do some floral, de, floral decoding of our own. So we got the flower here. There's flowers here, and then flowers all in the sun card. The sun, sunflowers, needless to say, have been a solar symbol as long as there have been sunflowers and people to observe them turning toward the light. Death. Here, the theme is roses, red and white. If the roses garlanded maiden in the lower right-hand corner looks familiar, familiar, it's because we met her first in the strength card associated with the sign of Leo, ruled by the sun. The child before her also wears the red rose garland. In both cases, they are representative, represent life, passion, vitality. And then there is the great white rose on the desk banner. It is the right rose of York or the mystic rose or something else entirely. Weight declares it signifies the fool. Recall sports, not only the sun's red feather, but also death's white rose. And then the six of cups. Most curious of all, though are the stylized five petal flowers one per cup nowhere else in the deck do we see flowers cut flowers in a vase elsewhere they are garlands are simply growing where they first sprang up the six of cups in the lord of pleasure and that is the purpose of a cut flower to give pleasure at the cost of its own life scented and perfect it causes joy but it will only last a day or two so both joy and mortality are in a, its message. Um, carpe diem, something, something, I don't know. Speaking of which, it's interesting to contemplate the range of ways the human psyche deals with time's passage. Because we think in linear time, there are only two ways to look forward and back. And I just thought that, what, what? <laughs> it was crazy. So that's all I have on that. I'm going to read you the poem real quick. It's really quickly on here. And this is, of course, T. Susan Chang's 36 Secrets. But I was just floored by this deacon. Floored. Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Frost. Nature's first green and gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaves subsides to leap, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. And I just thought that was beautiful. And I think that's all I got for y'all. Um, that's all I wrote down to. Um, but that is Scorpio Deacon 2. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to comment below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you're alerted to any future videos. And y'all have a good night.